Hey, thanks for joining us today. We would love it if you would go check out our website, ignitechurch.tv. There you can get more information about experience times, serving opportunities, and even give if you feel led to do that as you watch today's message. In this series, The Blessed Life, we talk about really those blessings that God's given us. And the blessings are a lot more than just the money that we have and the things that we possess. As we get into this season of Thanksgiving and we look at all those things that we're gracious for and the generosity that, that really just comes out in people, we really wanted to look at how has God blessed us and what has God given to us. We hope you enjoy. Check it out. So we're starting a new series called The Blessed Life, and what I think is cool now that all the pol political stuff is getting out of my news feed on Facebook and stuff, is I'm starting to see you guys post things that say, uh, 15, hashtag 15 days of thanks, and you guys are, are saying each day what you are thankful for, and I think that's really cool, and I, I think it's awesome that we're getting ready to go into this series called The Blessed Life, because we do have a lot of things to be thankful for, and I, I think it's encouraging to see what you guys are saying about your family and your friends and, and different things, your jobs and stuff, but how many of you actually want to be more blessed by a show of hands? How many want to be more blessed in your life than you already are? Okay, well, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you raised your hand because today, uh, this next verse, it's our key verse, and that's all, for all of you that want to be more blessed. So if you'll look at Acts 20, uh, verses 35, the words of Jesus, this is what he says, if you want to be more blessed than you already are. He says, it says, you should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I'm sure you guys have heard that, you hear it a lot during Christmas. It's more blessed to give than to receive. But I think we need to talk about this a little bit more. Uh, so today I want to talk to you uh, about the heart of generosity. The key to living a blessed life is a heart of generosity. I think too many times we just overlook this uh, throughout the year, throughout our lives. Uh, we get so busy and caught up in our own lives, in our own situations, our own circumstances, that we get so focused on us that we forget uh, really how to live a blessed life. And I think it's, it's not just, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Heath talked about uh, being generous uh, and how to give, but it was a mindset. We're going to talk about a mindset, but I think before anything, we have to understand it's also not just a mindset, it's a heart issue. We have to get our heart right. We have to have our heart in the right place to feel blessed. It's not all about things. It's not all about money. It's a, it's a status of the heart and whether we're content with what God has given us and blessed us with. And if we can begin to take that in, I think that he's going to give us more. In fact, his word says it. Uh, if you'll look here, the Bible actually has a lot to say about generosity. In Proverbs 11, 24, and 25, it says this. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. I think too many times we, we look at generosity as all about a money thing. And I like this verse right here because it says, give freely and become more wealthy. Well, that's pretty plain and simple. Be stingy and lose everything. Well, that, that's pretty plain and simple as well. Here's, what it, here's where it gets me, is the generous will prosper. And in this part, this is what you need to pay attention to. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Notice that part's not really talking about money, per se. It's talking about relationships. Pastor Heath, a few weeks ago, actually used the phrase that God's economy does not revolve around dollars. It revolves around relationships. And I think too many times we get so caught up uh, with that that we, we all focus on if, you know, we're only going to be blessed if we make more money. Well, no, you're all... I think you're really going to be blessed if you have more relationships in your life, more people that can feed into your life, that can uh, speak into your life and enrich you that way. I think too, so many times we see a lot of people in third world countries that don't have anything and we think, oh, poor them. But they're actually smiling a lot of times. You know, the Sarah McLaughlin commercials and things for animals, it's sad. A lot of people will do that with videos as well, but a lot of times when you actually go there, they're, they're smiling, they're happy, they're playing with each other, and they don't have anything, but it's because they're rich in relationships. And so I think that it's really interesting what the Bible says there. It says, those who refresh others, how much are you investing into other people? 
whether it's through organizations or whether it's through friends or family. We have to invest in other people. We have to refresh other people and then we'll ourselves in turn be blessed. So the Bible has a lot to say about generosity. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 8 uh, and verse 11, Jesus, uh, it, well, it talks about this story that Jesus tells. And Jesus is really, I, I love how he tells stories because he tells it so plain and simple. He speaks to the time at hand uh, that, that people can relate with, things that are going on in their world. And I think even here in southwest Missouri, we can uh, take a lot away from this because it talks about a farmer. We're very much a farm community, if you haven't noticed. If you look around, uh, there's a lot of farming that takes place. And this is what it says. It says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. Well, that makes sense. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Well, that makes sense too. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. So we have to understand that we shouldn't give reluctantly. We should give cheerfully. And we should give as much as we can because we're actually, we're planting the crop ourselves. It's for us to reap. But too many times we're so focused on it's me, it's me, it's me. And I, I, I don't want to lose what I have because then I might not have anything else. Well, the Bible's pretty plain. It says you're only going to get what you put into it. And that might only last for so long. So you, you better sow generously. And then you will reap generously. Verse 11 says this. It says, yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So we can impact a person's life. We can impact the kingdom of God if we will give and sow generously. So that's kind of what the Bible has to say about generosity. Uh, and so the key to having a blessed life is a heart of generosity. Well, I talked to you about the heart part, but there is still a mindset part. I think too many times we get caught in, in these mindsets. So I, I've got three points for you today. Um, and the first one is the bag mindset. The bag mindset. And that's not enough. Um, Haggai 1.6, it says, You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put in a bag with holes. So you have the bag mindset. It's interesting because... You know, I think this can relate to so many people. You week in and week out, you tirelessly, you trudge through the week and, and you give all that you have and you just feel like there's still too many bills at the end of the week and not enough money. And I think more than anything is it's, it's a mindset. I think you actually have more than what you have or what you think you have, but you just haven't planned for it. You haven't prepared for it. Uh, you might not have set up uh, the ground to, to sow into it well enough. And so I think it's interesting because I, I've been the same way. Um, you know, growing up, uh, this men, it's a mentality that's been put in, into us, I think. Uh, growing up, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I, my brother and I, my, my dad had us later in life, in, in his life. And so he was quite a bit older uh, than most normal dads are. And, uh, you know, we were blessed beyond belief growing up, but he was actually born in 1929, the year of the Great Depression. And uh, he was born into this mindset of, you know, we have very little, and so we have to make it, we have to make it last. We have to, to guard it with everything that we have. And so growing up, that had got bred into him. And there, there's nothing wrong with with trying to, to be good stewards of what you have. You should be good stewards, but it, it got into him so much that it, it came across in the wrong manner. I can remember growing up myself at my own house, 
where my mom, we would, I had more than I could ever imagine. I had more toys, I had more clothes, I had plenty of food in my belly all the time. The fridge was full, the pantry was full. But I can remember more times than not, he would come in and he would see my mom and she would be standing at the garbage disposal or the trash can and she would have like a month old leftovers that, man, you peel that lid open and it's rank. And she would start to throw it away and he'd go, no, stop, stop. And he would run over and he would grab that food and then he would go heat it up himself and he would eat it because he was afraid she was going to throw it away. That's gross. Like, I couldn't do it. But then there was also times where, you know, I'd be out playing down the road and I would have left a light on downstairs in my room or something like that. And he would call me all the way across the neighborhood to go turn the light out in my bedroom because I had left it on. It was this mindset of, we don't have enough. You don't take, you're, you're taking things for granted. And it was just this bag mentality that, that, What we have is just falling away and there's not going to be enough at the end of the day. And so I think too many times we have this mindset that that we don't have enough. I remember uh, even for me growing up and once I got married, my wife and I, we had this mindset for a while. Uh, When it came to tithing, uh, we were like, we don't have enough at the end of the week to to make our bills. And, And I remember that I had grown up in church and she did too. But we, we both struggled with tithing, but I knew tithing was right. And so I told her, we're going to tithe no matter what. And so I remember uh, over time, it just began to get instilled in her that, hey, tithing, we, we have to do this. We're actually seeing the fruit of tithing through this. And I remember one day driving to church, and she caught me completely off guard. Because here I'm the one, you know, leading the way. And she just threw this big challenge in front of me. And she said, you know, I think that we need to give more. And she goes, I think we need to give like... Instead of 10%, let's give 12%. And I'm just, I'm caught off guard. And I instantly, internally, I went back to that whole bag mentality from when I grew up that we don't have enough. We've got to make it last. We've got to stretch it. And even today, we're still that way. But I remember my, my integrity was on the line. And so we started giving and we gave more. And I remember the percentages, we started to increase because it started to change in us. Uh, the outlook, the mindset was different. We started, uh, I remember multiple times where we'd get to the end of the month and we would have zero dollars. Like I couldn't, guys, I couldn't buy like a cheesy roll up at Taco Bell, you know, like 99 cents. It was that bad. And I remember just getting a phone call. Hey, I need you to come do a wedding for me. Well, that's cool. I know you. Let's go do the wedding. I wasn't expecting anything. I didn't ask him for anything. I was just doing a generous thing for him on the fly. And I remember coming home with 200 bucks in my pocket thinking, well, it's that mindset. It hit me all of a sudden, you know, that if I give freely and I sow generously, that I'll always be taken care of. God, if you have an open hand, God's going to pass through that with more. But if you have a closed hand and you try to hold on to things all the time, then there's nothing, you can't put anything in a closed hand. And so that's, that's begun to change in my life. And I remember we got all the way up to like 20%. And it's, it's just crazy the amount of blessings that we've seen come into our lives through that. And, and so I just challenge you, is your mindset a bag mindset? The second mindset is, if you're taking notes, the basket mindset. The basket more than enough. The basket, more than enough. Deuteronomy 28, 3 and 6, it says, your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be more blessed. Have you ever seen those people that in life that just, oh man, they tick me off because it's like, it's like they have the, the golden touch. Whatever they touch just prospers. Whatever they, they do, just it seems to go their way. It seems to, to work out for them no matter what. And here you are, you're just kind of stuck and, and you're, you're upset because you're like, why does it always work for them and not for me? Well, probably because they have this mindset. They have the basket mindset that whatever they're taking in, they're giving out. And what this verse actually is talking about is in, in the Old Testament, uh, there were uh, these masters, the, the, the farmers out there, and they would sow 
generously into their crops, and then they would reap it. They would have employees come in, they would take the harvest, and they would get what they needed to survive. They would have everything they needed, but there was always a lot left on the ground. There was always a lot of wheat and grain and everything left on the ground. And so what the master would do is he would call people in from the town. He would say, okay, I've got what I need, but I'm going to give to you now. And so you come, bring your basketfuls, and you, you can pick up whatever you need, however much you need. And so the people would come out into the field, and they would pick up this grain, and they would put it in their baskets. And it talks about how uh, you ever heard the verse, pressed down, shaken together, and flowing over? Well, that's what this is talking about, is they would put the grain, and they would press it down, and then they would shake it around, and get all the air out, you know, and they would really pack it in there, and then they'd put more in there, to the point it was running over. And then they would go home. They had more than what they need. But it was because this guy, he sowed generously into his crop and then generously gave. He had more than what he needed. He had the basket mentality. Jesus actually talks, uh, there's a story about this where he, he's, he's out preaching, he's teaching a message in the New Testament, and he's out in the country, and he has this multitude of people, I mean, more than you can count. Um, and they're out there all day, and Jesus, he got a little winded, he got a little lengthy in his message, and it went way into the afternoon. And the, these people... Like, they were excited to be there, but they were starting to get a little hangry. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were a little upset that they hadn't got any food yet. And so, uh, Jesus, his disciples walk up to him. He's standing there teaching, and, and basically, they go, hey, these people, are, they're getting a little upset. They, they need to eat. We're worried about them. They need to eat uh, before you go any longer. And so, what happens in this story is this little boy, he's... He, his mom packed him a lunch. She prepared him well and sent him off. He, he had uh, fish and loaves in his basket. And uh, it says that he gave his basket that he had to Jesus. He had everything that he had in his life right there uh, for the day. And he gave it to Jesus. And Jesus took that. He blessed it. And then he was able to multiply that to the point that he fed 5,000 men and we don't even know how many women and children that were there as well that got fed through this. But what's more interesting than that is the fact that at the end of the day, the disciples went back around with more baskets. And it says they collected like nine full baskets of food left over. There was always more because this little boy gave what he had. There was plenty, so much so that it fed 5,000 plus people and there was still more left over because he gave generously Everybody else reaped generously, and he was blessed as well. And so I think that's the mindset we have to have, is we have to have the basket mindset, more than enough. We have to sow generously. And the third one is the barn mindset, the barn mindset. It's infinitely more than enough, infinitely more than enough. Deuteronomy 28.8 says, The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and everything you put your hand to. There's a story also in the book of Luke that Jesus talks about. It's a parable as well. I love the way Jesus tells his stories in parables. He talks about this rich man, and it says this in Luke 12, 16 through 21. It says, The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I think this is so much our mindset as well. Whenever we get a little bit of anything and we start to store it away, what shall I do? He says, I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. He, he wants to hoard it. It says, and there, I, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I say to myself, I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Now, that sounds great, doesn't it? But here's what God says. God says to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then, who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. See, it's not all about things. Uh, too many times we have this mindset of the rich man. 
You know, we, we get and we get and we get and we still have, I, I think what we are is we're a, a bunch of people that have, we have what we need. We're, we're, we're living basically with the barn mindset, but we have the bag mindset in our head. We, like we don't have enough. We, our, our bag might have holes and we're going to lose it all. And so we need to build more. We need to, we need to tear down what we have. We need to build up a bigger barn. And there's nothing wrong. Let me, let me paraphrase this correctly. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of things and being wealthy in a lot of things. But I think that if that's all we focus on, then we've lost everything. I don't want us to have a poverty mindset. We, sh- we don't need to give everything away. Uh, and then be stuck on the streets. No, we need to be wise stewards of what we have. And we need to love people. We need to invest in what God actually uses as currency in his kingdom, which is relationships. If we have plenty, we need to give. We need to invest in other people. And don't just give and then walk away. Give and have a conversation. You know, Invest in people because that's where your heart really begins to to feel the warm fuzzies, you know, because you're you're actually feeling blessed at that point, like you're making a difference. We're given the things that we have as resources and tools to make a difference. And that's where you really begin to see generosity taking place and feeling blessed in your own life. And so, you know, you, you maybe have the question, how much can God bless you with? Well, I want to read you two more scriptures and then we'll get out of here. Luke 16, 10, and 11, it says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. See a pattern here? So if you have not been trustworthy in handling, God, in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? There's a pattern that's taken place here. You have to be trusted. You have to lay out the groundwork to to be able to be blessed and receive more. Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. This is where it's talking about the tithe. It says, Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats, places that you stored in, will brim over with new wine. I think, I think we, we need to get this healthy mindset of what it really means to be blessed. So many times culture and the world feeds into us that we have to have X amount of dollars. We have to have certain kinds of cars and clothes. We have to be, basically be keeping, out up, keeping up with the Joneses. Our house has to be so large. In fact, our houses are, are so large, it's like we have a barn that we keep our cars in. It's called a garage. You know, that's how wealthy we really are. And we don't take that into account. And so as we get ready to go into this season of giving thanks and sharing time with family and friends, I think this is a good series to start with. And you guys already started it on Facebook. You know, giving thanks, 15 days of thanks, what you're thankful for. But let's remember, we need to continue to give more generously so that, we can receive, so that others can receive as well as us. And so that's the key verse that I want you to take away with today is Acts 20 and 35, verse 35. If you don't take anything else away, remember this verse. It is more blessed to give than receive. And that's what we need to do. Let me pray for you guys.